Hey hobby farmers, Eric here with the Hobby Farm Guys. Late last summer, I had the opportunity to butcher my first turkey for one of our Thanksgiving videos. That experience involved hand plucking a 25 pound tom turkey, and I never knew there were so many feathers on a bird. A short time later, we put out a video on chicken feathers, and I learned that your average chicken has between eight to 10,000 feathers. While I wasn't counting, I'm sure that turkey had more. Today's video tackles the topic of what to do with all those feathers. I'll go get the guys. Stay tuned. What to do with feathers is coming up right after this. Hey everyone, Hobby Farm Guys here. Steve, Brian, and Eric is back behind the camera again. Today we tackle a topic requested by a couple of our awesome subscribers. A 15th century suit of gothic full plate armor and BB Thomas. Today, we look at the question, what to do with all those feathers after processing birds? Whether it's chickens, turkeys, ducks, geese, quail, or whatever, if you raise and butcher meat birds, you end up with a large pile of feathers. Shoot, even if you aren't butchering poultry, just having a bunch of birds going through a molt can generate quite a pile of feathers. But is there a use for them? And if so, what is it? Feathers have some amazing characteristics, as we discussed in our chicken feather video, which makes them pretty darn useful. Today we'll investigate what makes feathers so useful and take a look at some of their historical uses. We'll also look at some new developing commercial uses for feathers. Finally, we'll look at viable options for a small scale hobby farmer. Chicken feathers. I'll be honest with you, I never imagined we sat down and started talking about topics we'd like to cover and share information on that a video on chicken feathers was going to make the yeah. list. Twice. You see, we did a deep dive on chicken feather video a while back where we discussed chicken feathers and their types, functions, properties, and detail. And well, if that description got you excited, you're unlike most people and there's probably something <laughs> wrong with you. But we like you. You're our kind of person if a seven minute video on chicken feathers gets you excited. We've linked that video in the description for those of you who missed it the first time around or for those of you who want to watch it again. And we know there aren't many of you out there who watched it the first time, so if you're one of those people up for round two, we salute you as a YouTube chicken warrior. Surprisingly, what we found out was that a seven minute video on chicken feathers wasn't enough. So we're back with part two. Today we want to look at uses for chicken feathers, and really that centers around one thing, keratin. A natural protein, keratin is one of the strongest materials in nature. Like chitin, the material found in the exoskeletons of insects and the outer shells of shellfish, keratin is extremely durable, and it comes in both alpha and beta forms. Alpha keratin is found in soft tissues like skin, hair, and sheep wool, while beta keratin is present in hard tissues like the horns, claws, hooves, and feathers. Structurally, keratin is fibrous with a very high concentration of cysteine, a sulfur-containing amino acid. That's why burning your hair smells so badly, your nose is catching that sulfur. Those sulfur bonds present within and between the molecules provide the strength and elasticity we see in human hair or wool. Keratin is also resistant to digestive acid, so carnivores that eat fur or hair, they expel it often as a hairball. But beta keratin is even more special, and it comes in different forms itself. Feather beta keratin distinguishes birds from all other living creatures. Birds are the only organisms that have it, and they have it in abundance. This beta keratin makes feathers strong, flexible, and durable. Imagine the peregrine falcon, an occasional predator of chickens. These birds and their feathers can go through a 200 mile an hour dive in sudden recovery without fracturing. Many man-made materials can't handle that type of stress. And of those that can, most are nowhere near as flexible and light as Mother Nature's marvel of engineering the feather. When the chicken genome was published in 2004, it became apparent just how complex these beta keratins are. On just one of the chicken chromosomes, for example, there are more than 60 feather beta keratin genes, each very similar, yet still different from each other. Each molecule consists of some 102 amino acids, hence, Feathers and the beta carotenes that form them have the potential to be very useful. So what have chicken feathers been used for over the ages? Honestly, not much. Pledging for arrows, stuffing for coats and pillows, decorations and adornments for the most part. But chicken feathers weren't the favorite use for any of these. Goose down is much softer than chicken feathers and there are better feathers for fledging and decorating as well. 
Probably my favorite historical use for feathers was their use as a weapon by the Greeks to defend against Roman invasion. When Roman troops besieged the Greek town of Ambracia in 189 BC, the Romans were unable to breach the walls of the city, so they decided to tunnel under them. But the crafty Greeks figured out what was happening, and they started digging tunnels of their own. Now when the tunnels met under the city, your standard spear fighting commenced, but with shields, spears quickly lost their effectiveness. The Greeks then took a jar as wide as their tunnel, bored a hole in the bottom, and inserted an iron funnel into it. The jar was then filled with chicken feathers and topped with an iron lid full of holes. The tunnel was backfilled around the jar, leaving only two holes through which spears could be thrust to defend the jar. Fire was then lit next to the mouth of the jar, and the Greeks then took a pair of bellows and vigorously blew up the fire through the funnel that had been inserted. This created a huge volume of acrid smoke, which was blown into the enemy's faces. And it was more than just stinky. Combustion of the cysteine in feathers released toxic sulfur compounds. This event became known as the first use of poison gas against a Roman siege tunnel. Unfortunately, while it worked like a charm when executed, it wasn't enough to defeat the Roman army. Shortly after the weaponized burning feather incident, a group of envoys from Athens and Rhodes convinced the city to surrender to Marcus Fulvius. While there may not be a need today to produce toxic gas in defense of a tunnel, there is a need to find a solution for chicken feathers. A standard sized chicken sports from eight to 10,000 feathers, and while a chicken feather doesn't weigh all that much, when you consider that in the US alone, some 8.5 billion chickens will be slaughtered this year in commercial operations, that equates to some two to three billion pounds of chicken feathers. Historically, those feathers were seen as a waste product and were typically burned or buried. Now, we just talked about how burning feathers is a great way to make friends. Yeah. And feathers, due to their beta keratins, don't always break down easily when buried in mass. Keratin is hard enough that feathers, unlike cloth, are often found nearly intact at archaeological sites. Their tough, fibrous structure is poorly digested by most protein-degrading enzymes. But when mixed with manure, feathers degrade well. Sometimes feathers are processed into feather meal and used as a high-protein feed supplement. Feather meal is produced by a high-pressure steam processing method similar to autoclaving, following by drying. Heat and steam hydrolyze the feathers into a cysteine-rich, high-protein product that is 60% digestible. But producing feather meal is only marginally profitable because of the cost of moving and processing the feathers. But more and more, feathers are being investigated and used in a whole new variety of ways. And it starts by looking at feathers differently, as a fiber. Like wool, feathers are made of keratin, but the surface area is much larger because the diameter of the fibers is smaller. As a result, the fiber can absorb more moisture. Additionally, the crystal structure of the feather fibers also makes them naturally stable and durable. And feather fiber also shares many properties in common with cellulose, the starch that forms wood and paper. Thanks to these properties, feathers can be put to good use in the manufacture of consumer goods, replacing wood pulp and other expensive fibers. The properties that make feather fibers valuable are intrinsic to keratin. Individual feather fibers are too short to allow feathers to be spun into thread and woven into cloth, but they can be mixed with man-made materials like polyester and spun into thread, or they can be compacted into breathable, non-woven cloths like those used for hospital gowns. And that's just the beginning. Other manufacturing treatments can yield products with far different properties. Researchers have been able to make clear film from feather fiber by breaking down and reforming the bonds between the fiber strands. The fibers have also been used in manufacturing plastics. Mixing the feather product with man-made polymers to make hard, tough materials. The orderly structure of keratin helps stabilize the structure of plastics, making them stronger. Another advantage to using feathers? While they are strong and durable, they will eventually break down. Polystyrene, which is not a natural product, is going to be around for a long, long time. But with feathers, you basically insert a binder into the plastic with a half-life, leading to the eventual breakdown of the product. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency estimates that more than 16 billion diapers made from wood pulp are discarded each year. Feathers could reduce that number significantly. Several companies are currently working on scaling up production of absorbent feather-based products including diapers, filters, insulation, upholstery padding, paper, and clothing. The catch is that feathers can't just be taken from the chicken and processed into new materials. Although the whole feather is made of keratin, the 
crystal structure of the protein in the brittle central quill is different from that in the soft but durable barbs. Only the barbs have the desirable properties. As such, the barbs have to be stripped and separated from the stiff central quill to become useful. As this technology continues to develop and improve, the market for feathers will continue to grow. Other researchers have found better ways of breaking down the feathers. Scientists at North Carolina State University have isolated a keratin digesting strain of bacteria. Further, they've identified the enzyme within the bacteria responsible for breaking down the keratin. By hydrolyzing the feathers, they become highly digestible, greatly improving the historical feather mill. Additionally, the enzyme could play a further role beyond that. That's right. If, as mentioned earlier, disposable diapers and other products change to a feather keratin base from cellulite, landfills could be inoculated with the enzyme leading to a rapid decay of waste products, unlike the mountains of cellulose-filled diapers currently clogging landfills. But most of these technologies are still in their infancy. They're expensive and take specialized equipment. So what's a simple hobby farmer to do? Yeah, well it may make sense for commercial chicken processors who generate more than 65,000 pounds of feathers a day to invest in these technologies. For those of us that do a couple dozen to a couple hundred birds each year, that type of investment just doesn't make sense. For those of us in that group, composting is going to be the most cost-effective use of feathers. Right. You can save some pretty ones and sell them to crafters and fly tires, but for the most part, composting will be your answer. Feathers are a valuable part of the poultry waste compost mix because they add nitrogen, an important fertilizer component. So, simply add them to your compost pile and turn them into nitrogen-rich compost. So what are your hacks for dealing with feathers? Let us know any tips and tricks you have. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on hobby farming. Hey guys, you forgot to remind everyone to like and subscribe. Man, I'm dealing with a couple amateurs here. Like and subscribe. Thanks everybody.